Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the Minto Pyramid Principle by Barbara Minto. At the end of this video, you'll be able to use the Minto Pyramid to do two things. Firstly, deliver clear, thorough, yet flexible communication, regardless of the medium you're using, be it email or a presentation. And secondly, you'll be able to synthesize complex data and extract important insights from it. Now, as you progress up the career ladder, the ability to communicate complex information clearly without losing your audience's attention becomes increasingly important. And this is what the Minto Pyramid can help you to do. Now, the framework was originally developed by a lady called Barbara Minto, a Harvard MBA graduate who worked at consulting firm McKinsey. Now, if you're using the pyramid in a top-down fashion, then the key components are, firstly, Start with the answer by making your recommendation or conclusion immediately, so give the answer straight away. Secondly, highlight key supporting arguments that contribute to your answer and summarise your data. And finally, provide data to back up each of your supporting arguments. Now, in this video, we're going to focus on using the pyramid top-down for now, but don't worry, we'll look at how to use the Minto pyramid from the bottom up later in this video. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose you work for a small online food magazine and you want to answer the question, how do we double profit? Now you might choose to answer this question as you see here. Well, our current growth is anemic and we've identified the most attractive food related market and we're uniquely positioned to enter that market. So to double profit, we should enter the health food market. Now there's nothing wrong with answering this question in this way, but if you were to answer the question using the Minto principle, you'd begin with the answer like this. To double profit, we should enter the health food market because our current growth is anemic, it's the most attractive food related market, and we're uniquely positioned to enter it. By answering using the Minto pyramid principle, you begin with the answer and then you follow it up with the reasoning for your answer. This makes it easier for your listener because having the answer up front makes it much easier for them to follow your reasoning. It may sound obvious to you to start with the answer, but how many presentations have you sat through wondering what's the point of all this? Let's map this example into a hierarchy, adding one more level containing the data to back up your insights. So as you can see, the hierarchy is effectively a pyramid and on the first two levels here, we have the answer we'd written before, and on the lowest level we have our supporting facts or our supporting data. Now before we can look at how to use the Minto Pyramid to give a presentation, you need to know two more things. So the first thing you need to know about is encapsulation, which simply means that each box should capture or summarise the main point of all the boxes below it. So for example, the box containing health is the most attractive food market, summarizes all the information in the two boxes below it. The second thing you need to know about is that at every horizontal level of your Minto pyramid, you should apply a concept known as MISI. Now this is an acronym standing for mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive, and it comprises of two parts. So first mutually exclusive means that each box at a given level of your pyramid should be completely separate and not overlapping in any way. Collectively exhaustive means that the set of all boxes at a given level should exhaust all the options. Now, another way to say that is that all the boxes at a given level should make the whole and adding more boxes should not be possible or shouldn't make sense. So now that we've got all that out of the way, let's take a look at how you can use the Minto Pyramid to give a presentation. Now here you can see that each numbered box represents a slide of your presentation and the order in which you should show it, effectively your presentation outline. You can see that you're effectively working down each branch of the pyramid in turn. Now one of the reasons the Minto Pyramid is so useful is because of its flexibility. Suppose you're due to present a presentation to your board of directors, but others giving presentations before you overrun, and you're left with just 10 minutes to give a presentation you'd initially plan to use a full hour for. Well, with the Minto Pyramid, this isn't an issue, as you can simply adapt your presentation on the fly and present something like you see here. So you could spend a minute on your main point and then three minutes on each of your main supporting arguments. 
So let's imagine one final scenario. Suppose during your one hour presentation, an executive disagreed with some of your reasoning. In that case, you could spend extra time discussing that pyramid branch and scheme through the rest. This would look something like this. Now, the real advantage of the Minto pyramid principle when giving a presentation is that even though you're chopping and changing the slides you're showing to fit the available time, the actual message you're delivering doesn't change at all, nor do you miss any critical components of your arguments. Hence, the completeness of your message remains intact, and that's a big benefit. So far, we've been looking at the Minto Pyramid Principle as a top-down method of logically constructing and communicating an argument. But let's take a moment to look at how you can use it from the bottom up to synthesize and make sense of data. To do this, you organize your data or research into distinct groups according to MISI. Then you extract insights from that data. And finally, you combine everything into a central thesis or insight or takeaway. Now, one situation in which this bottom-up approach comes into its own is in a job interview where an interviewer asks you to analyse some data and then present your findings. You can use this bottom-up approach to construct your arguments logically, followed by the top-down approach to present your conclusions in a logical yet flexible way. Now, there are several advantages and disadvantages associated with the Minto Pyramid Principle. In terms of advantages, then it gets straight to the point. If you wait until the end of your communication to give your recommendation, your audience will have to think back about the reasons you already gave them. It's flexible. If the time doesn't permit you to go through your complete reasoning, you can still get all of your main arguments across. You can use it as a diagnostic tool for your thinking to ensure your arguments are logical, complete and don't overlap. Finally, it's logical and easy to follow. In terms of disadvantages, then it takes discipline and often a lot of trial and error to create a Minto pyramid on top of complex data sets. And finally, if you don't have good analysis or data at the lowest level of the pyramid, it can lead to the wrong, albeit logically constructed, conclusion. So in summary, you can use the Minto pyramid principle in two ways to help you clarify your thinking and deliver logical yet flexible communications. So firstly, we have top down whereby you get straight to the point and explain your reasoning, enabling your audience to follow along easily. And finally, in a bottom-up fashion, whereby you use it to help synthesize and organize data so that you can extract important insights from it. So that's it for this lesson. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon.